How does J&J &J look at the situation of comparing these vaccines? We're told by public health officials, Dr. Fauci and others, the important thing is this prevents hospitalizations and deaths. But you hear the conversations from folks saying 95% versus 72%. I want the 95%. How does J&J &J look at that dynamic? Well, look, all of these vaccines are incredibly effective. And if you would have asked, I, I believe any of the companies, would we achieve these kind of efficacy endpoints? I think it would have been on the top end of our expectations 12 months ago. Uh, what I really think is important to know about our vaccine is, number one, is that our clinical trial, as you know, started in September of 2020. And if you look at the incidence rate of COVID-19, not only in the United States, but around the world, that's unfortunately when we really started seeing that second wave. So the incidence rate went up at a very, very high rate. Secondly, we conducted our clinical trial on a global basis. So about 40 plus percent of our patients were here in the United States, but almost 40 percent were in Latin America and 15 percent were in South Africa. And what's really important to know is that of those patients in South Africa, over 90 percent have the South African variant, which of course, you know, prior to this point in time, in the summer of 2020, the incidence rate was much lower. The same with the P2 variant, as you know, Dr. Scott Gottlieb has talked about it here on this program, uh, that's occurring in Latin America, was also at a very high rate. So our data actually uh, includes these most challenging, pernicious, virulent strains. And what we saw was an 85% effect effectiveness rate in the severe disease. And really importantly, when you think of, you know, what do you want from a vaccine? You don't want to go to the hospital and you certainly don't want to die. And what we have seen thus far is 100% efficacy at those parameters, again, with a single shot. So as, as you well know, you, all of you talk to analysts on this program each and every day. You, there's a lot of different ways to try and do comparisons. But when you really look at what's the objective here, keeping people out of the hospital, keeping people from dying, we believe this is an incredibly important tool to be added to healthcare systems, let alone for patients around the world. Hey, hey Alex, a couple of things. The, the, the variants uh, that, that are bound to happen that we see now and, and into the future, uh, we're, we're so agile at, at all this uh, molecular biology now. Um, is there an advantage to the, the, the messenger RNA in terms of quickly adapting to different strains, or can you do it with, with the adeno vector? And then I have a follow-up on that. Yeah. Well, Joe, I think, I think both of these platforms, as you well know from your background, the great news is the agility, the flexibility that we have to actually literally be, des be designing software real time to help address some of these new and emerging variants. So in this case, uh, I believe the other companies are already working on options for the variants. Again, we're quite confident based upon the clinical data that we already have with our vaccine that we're going to it see works, a very yeah. robust response. But we're simultaneously doing the exact same thing, uh, you know, not knowing yeah. what exact path this virus will take longer term. And then the other, because the, all along, people have wondered whether the messenger RNA uh, delivery system w would get the same T cell response that we know that adeno mediated, mediated vaccines get. And I've even had it pointed out to me that, that people that, that are still alive, there are a few from the Spanish flu, they still have T cell immunity to, to the Spanish, so it's more longer lasting. Is it better, the adeno, do you know, is there any data that shows the adeno vector is better at T cell um, immunity than the messenger RNA or are they the same? Well, Joe, we're, we're really encouraged by some of the early data that we have and, and the clinical data that we've developed about the T cell and B cell response, because you're right, there doesn't always seem to be this exact correlation between antibodies and T cell and B cell response, particularly with some of these variants. Uh, so, look, this is an area that's going to need additional study before we understand it completely. Uh, but as we know, these are very complex systems. It's not just one aspect that, you know, is having the impact on the, the virus. But we think this combined approach with the adenovirus combined with the spike protein is clearly related to the very robust results that we're seeing even in these most challenging strains. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.